Hey everyone, this is Friedel Hacker AJ Rave, and I'm here with my recap and review of Lovecraft Country season number one, episode number three, which is titled Holy Ghost. And this episode, I have read that each episode of Lovecraft Country, even though there's a main narrative uh, inclu- uh, that uh, centers around Atticus's family background and his connection with the Bright Whites, every episode is going to feel very different when it comes to the genre it will be showcasing. So episode three was very haunted mansion, haunted house, and all of that stuff, even though the main narrative thread of Atticus's relationship with the Bright Whites was still there, and it did appear in the end. So this episode opened with Letty just sitting in church, and I think that she's not really feeling herself, especially because after she and uh, what Atticus and everyone else uh, in the group went through, especially the death of Uncle George. So Letty is still trying to find herself. She is still trying to address everything that happened to her. And I do have to say that I appreciated this episode opening with the spoken word that was uh, uh, a tribute to Lemoy uh, Melagenado, who is uh, who is a uh, voguing icon and is currently one of the judges in HBO's legendary Uh, reality competition. That spoken word, I think, debuted in 2017's Nike ad, uh, and you can Google it. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's just like uh, the way Laomi has shattered ceilings and all of that stuff. Coming back to the episode, so we get this text, and it's It says that in the summer of 1955, a group of Negro men and women moved into a house on the north side of Chicago. Ten days later, three people went missing inside the house, never to be seen again. Pioneering is dangerous. So we know that in ten days' time, three people are going to go missing and it's going to be dangerous. We see Letty telling Ruby that she has bought a house and I'm like, Letty, why the heck would you buy this house? One look at it and you can tell that this is a very creepy house. This is this is a haunted house, you all. But yeah, Letty ended up getting some money. And even then, the audience is going to ask, like, where the heck did Letty get money? We don't necessarily get to know the answer uh, in the beginning of the episode, but we do find out. So Letty takes her, uh, Ruby into the house. And it has three floors, 13 rooms. And Letty is thinking of... Uh, Uh, putting these uh, rooms for rent and helping the community and there's also this elevator and it's not necessarily working so Letty goes in to check the elevator shaft and the elevator just comes down and I got Resident Evil movie flashbacks but yeah Letty survives and they need to get the elevator fixed. Then we get to Hippolyta, and Hi- uh, and it turns out that Uncle George's death occurred like two or three weeks ago. So when we get to find Hippolyta, we are seeing her trying to trying to adapt to her uh, husband's death, and you can tell that she's not really buying the story that Atticus and his father told her. She takes out uh, George's old copy of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and she starts ripping out pages. She's not, yeah, she's not doing well. And Atticus has been giving them time, and D is uh, Diana, is of course happy that her cousin's there but yeah Atticus kind of feel, uh, feels that he needs to get out of the house and Hippolyta also, th- also I'm not really sure I think that Atticus is kind of reminding Hippolyta of uh, George and she's also not uh, trustworthy of Atticus because she feels that Atticus is hiding something then we see Atticus going to his uh, dad's house and he's like, dad, I'm going to stay here for a few days. And his dad is a mess. He's been drinking and he's been remembering all of the stories that George told him. And uh, Atticus also tells uh, his dad that they should tell Hippolyta about what happened to George. And his dad is like, no, we aren't, we aren't going to do that. And we see his uh, father lose his temper, which again is something that we know he, he did a lot when Atticus was young. He is a very abusive person. So Atticus just decides to walk out of the house and he goes to meet up with Letty. And Letty is a bit disappointed because Atticus uh, hasn't really met her after what happened with Uncle George. I guess the last time they met each other was at uh, Uncle George's funeral. But Atticus is like, you know what, Letty, I'm here because I'm going back to Florida and I just wanted to check in with you. And these two hug. But then there's this loud sound of horns blazing. And yeah, the white people in the community aren't happy with 
African Americans moving in and they are trying to annoy them by blaring the car horns and let you like you know what uh, I'll, I'll deal with it and also if you guys google certain things then yes redlining was a big thing back in the day in America and yeah bla uh, black people moving into white communities always caused a whole lot of trouble so that's something that I really appreciate about Lovecraft Country that even though there's a whole lot of supernatural involved the baseline is still something that's uh, the, yeah the baseline is still the bad stuff that humanity has done without any supernatural involved so it's the next day and Letty is sleeping and you can see these creepy hands taking the covers off and there's also this creepy woman sitting next to her bed yeah the house is haunted we already know that and the house is getting uh, warm they can't open up the windows because the the, bla the blazing horns the the sound would be too much so Letty goes down into the basement and the broiler is uh, overheating and she and she is able to expel some of the pressure but before she goes back up she, she hears something coming from the cellar door and it's as if something is trying to get out she gets Atticus and Atticus and her go into the basement and yeah the cellar is uh, it looks like a prison cell as if you would place prisoners here and I'm like yeah the house is haunted I would like you to get out of here but no Letty still decides to stay here then I guess it's day number eight and there's a uh, housewarming party from Letty and everyone's there everyone's having a fun time and I think that this is also where some of the guests guests uh, mention Martin Luther King and him being in love with a white woman you can google it as well it happened I think her the woman's name was Betty or Betsy but yeah you can google it and while Letty is in the kitchen uh, Hippolyta comes in and Hippolyta brought in a whole lot of food and this is also where Hippolyta tells Letty about Atticus and Letty is like is Atticus reminding you of George and Hippolyta is like not really but yeah Hippolyta knows that something's up and she goes to find Diana and the rest of the kids and Diana and the rest of the kids for some freaking reason are in the basement playing with a what what do you call it a Ouija board and I'm like why why would you try to communicate with the dead when you're in a in a creepy house but yeah they're communicating with the dead and the letter end up spelling that George isn't alive isn't dead or is alive or something and of course uh, Diana doesn't like that so she leaves and Hippolyta is trying to search for Diana she is like Diana are you in the attic but no a, a door opens behind Hippolyta and she ends up seeing this uh, mechanism which I which I think is uh, is like portraying uh, the movement of the planets and yeah Hippolyta being the kind of knowledge to woman that she is she's of course in intrigued by it Atticus is moving around the party in his army uniform and it's also kind of his way to intimidate the white neighbors that he's from the army so don't mess with us Atticus's old ex-friend comes in and he's like hey are you and Letty a thing and Atticus is like not really and Letty is dancing with someone else and she goes to the bathroom to cool herself up and why and in the mirror we see that there's another ghost there but before something can happen Atticus comes in and Atticus and Letty hook up and yeah they end up having sex and it's quite quick I think they don't even last for like five or six seconds and there's blood involved and I, I'm like wait Letty was this your first time but Letty uh, tells Atticus that she forgot that she was on her period and that's where the blood is from and Atticus is like you know what Letty it's nothing it's nothing to be ashamed of it it happens and Atticus leaves and again Letty wants to sit down and talk to Atticus but Atticus isn't like necessarily talking to her Letty goes back to join the party and Ruby is talking about how she is trying to find a good job and she wants to open doors for other people of color to find good jobs uh, however uh, Ruby notices a burning cross in the front lawn everyone goes out and Letty is like you know what this is it this is it she goes out she has a baseball bat in her hand and she starts smashing all of the cars and stopping all of the honking and uh, Atticus and a few other men stand there with their guns and of course the police is coming so Ruby takes the guns and she drives off and uh, they get all of them get arrested and Letty is in uh, in one of the police cars or the vans and the commissioner is there and he is like why 
would someone like you end up buying the Winthrop house and where did you get the money and all of that stuff and of course again we don't know where Letty got the money from and this is also where uh, uh, the police officer ends up beating Letty up in a weird way because uh, because Letty can't brace herself the driver is moving the car around and Letty is being thrown around in the van and this is also kind of where the officer kind of warns Letty that she needs to get out of the house because apparently eight dead bodies of African Americans was found in this house and yeah she needs to get out of it and I'm like officer are you kind of warning Letty to get out why would you warn her why won't you just let her die Letty goes back into the cellar which she has turned into a dark room to develop her photos and she's looking through her photos and she notices something. She places the photos on the floor and she ends up seeing this face of a person in there and then we have this weird scene where this uh, weird ghost comes out and it's supposed to be scary but I ended up laughing. Anyway that ghost is like get out of my house and Letty is, be, is pulled all the way to the seller's uh, stairs and of course she runs away. She goes back up and the other people are leaving the house because they don't want any more drama with the white neighborhood and Letty is trying to figure out what, what she just saw and who this house belongs to and, Ru and Ruby is like Letty we need to figure out what to do with the money and Letty is like you know what Ruby don't worry because I still have our mom's money and Ruby is like wait mom left you an inheritance so it turns out that Letty's mother for some reason left her money she got a phone call from the bank the lawyers and a whole lot of money was put into her her account and I'm like I don't trust that this scene helped her understand the dynamic Letty has with her other siblings and uh, yeah uh, Ruby is like you know what Letty you're just like our mom however you're a bit worse because at least our mom didn't hide the fact that she was selfish however you you can't understand that you're a selfish person and if you had the money and if you really cared about us uh, your brother and sister you would have uh, divided the money amongst us and yeah uh, Ruby leaves. Then we have a scene between Hippolyta and Montrees and yeah Hippolyta again tells Montrees that she's not really okay with the story that Atticus and Montrees told her about how Uncle George was shot by a racist, racist police officer and how Atticus and Montrees ended up killing that police officer. Hippolyta is like there's something you aren't telling me. Letty is in the bar and she's researching and Atticus comes as well and Atticus is like you know what Letty let me know what you're going through how can I help and this is where we get a whole lot of information about how this house uh, is known as the Winthrop house and the previous owner was uh, some doctor called Epstein he was an astrophysicist and apparently Epstein is uh, uh, in is related to the police officer that told Letty about leaving the house and yeah, eight African Americans uh, died in that house uh, apparently because uh, they were uh, they they were forced to go through human experimentation that Epstein is involved with, and Letty also notices that the pictures that she took of other people in the house there are weird faces on those pictures that resemble the people who disappeared, and yeah, it's it's just it's it's not good. So Letty has to figure out a way to help these tormented souls exit the house and she also needs to get Appenstein's uh, ghost out of there as well. And this is also where Letty tells Atticus that uh, the day they hooked up in the bathroom that was her first time and Atticus is like I didn't know. Letty is like it doesn't matter. I don't regret it. I just needed it. I needed to feel needed to feel something. And Letty kind of breaks down especially after everything they had gone through because Letty died. Letty was shot and then she came back to life so it's basically PTSD for her and uh, Letty is like you know what I'm not leaving this house I'm going to do something I'm not going to live my life scared and yeah Letty's decision to go back to the house is it kind of showcases her bravery Letty decides to get this uh, voodoo practitioner with her in order to purge the house and the voodoo vo lady is like you know what let's go in they go into the cellar and the voodoo lady is like yeah I can sense a whole lot of dark energy here so she starts chanting and while that's happening three white people decide to come into the house in order to hurt Letty, Atticus and the voodoo lady and I'm like you know what you three need to get out of here or else you'll die but then again you three are racist so Bye-bye.
and these three do die uh, because the spirits that haunt the house they end up killing them uh, two of these people are killed by this weird spirit that has a body of a basketball player but the head of a child and then one of these uh, three people end up being dead uh, end up being killed by the haunted elevator and uh, in the cellar Atticus ends up getting possessed by Epstein ghost and Epstein is like get out of here get out of my house and Letty is like you know what this is the time I need to stand my ground I need to fight so she calls for help from the other souls that are trapped in this house and yeah everyone decides to help Letty and as all of them begin to chant all of the deformities that these tormented spirits have, they start healing and Epstein ends up uh, like turning into ash and dying. And yeah, Letty is able to help everyone. Epstein is like, I guess he's in hell now, while the rest of the spirits can move on and the house is not haunted anymore. And I have to say that Journey Smollett's arms in this scene, very toned, I love them. The house is back to normal. There's a reporter here because Letty has opened the house again uh, to people in her community who are looking for cheap housing. And a reporter is like, you are doing something great. You are a pioneer for your community. And as they're talking, these two get into the elevator. The elevator is working again. And the reporter is like, do you know anything about the three men that disappeared in this neighborhood? And Letty is like, no, I don't know anything about it. And these two uh, walk out of the elevator and we see the elevator door close on its own and then the elevator keeps on going down to this underground tunnel. In the tunnel there are the skeletons and the three bodies of the three white guys that ended up dying last night are also there and I'm like, oh, oh how many people did this house kill and where did this tunnel lead? And after we are done with the haunted house storyline, Atticus sees Christina going into an office and Atticus follows her. And of course, Atticus wants to kill her. He takes out his gun and Christina is like, oh, Atticus, you can't kill me like that. Because for some reason, there's this spell on Atticus that he can't, can't harm Christina. And Christina talks about how the Wintrop uh, uh, house belonged to... Uh, uh, Titus Winthrop and Titus Winthrop was one of the founding members of the Sons of Adams, the cult that Christina's father was part of. However, Titus was banished because he stole certain pages from the Book of Creation or the Book of Names and Christina's father is trying to find them. And she also talks about how people belonging to the cult try to create their own spells. However, one person might end up only finding one spell in their entire lifetime. And Christina's father, that the spell that he created had to deal with invulnerability because he thought that if no one can hurt him, then he would live forever. However, he had to give up that spell when he was opening the door to the Garden of Eden. So maybe Christina now has that spell on her. We don't know. But basically, Christina is like, Atticus, I have a mission for you. I need you to find the lost pages that uh, Titus took. And I also need to find uh, all of the information that Titus has in order to decipher the book of uh, book of names or the book of creation or the language of Adam or whatever that is. And there's in, in this scene, while she's raising the blinds, I actually thought that uh, she was going to scream and make an entire fiasco of it, that she was going to make it seem that a black man was trying to hurt her and then she was going to have uh, Atticus go to be sent to prison. But no, she doesn't do that. She lowers Atticus's arm and she is like, Atticus, contact me when you're ready so that we can talk about our family heritage or our lineage and you need to be smarter about this because you can't just walk around shooting white women and this is where the episode ends again it kind of felt like a self-contained story as far as the haunted mansion stuff was concerned and letty's uh, storyline was concerned but yeah let's see what happens in the next episode i'm actually looking forward to seeing how hippolyta and Diana are going to be involved in this entire mess. And yeah, Christina's back. Of course, she's going to do something. Let's see what she does. And let me know what you guys thought of the episode down in the comment section below. And until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later. Bye.